dear students welcome to epg pathsala an e content project and a national mission on education through icit i am dr b j prakash working as session professor at the department of library and information science baradasan university trichrapalli today we are going to discuss on digital library planning and implementation under the paper digital library uh, the uh, idea of, of this model, model is, is to import, import knowledge, knowledge on the following, the following aspects, aspects such as, such as Develop, develop the digital library project, project plans, plans and budgets, and budgets identify, identify the sources, sources for funding, funding and grants, grants develop, develop the strategic, strategic planning, planning for, for collection, collection development, plan, plan for infrastructure and implementation, identify manpower skill development and implement the digitization and its sustainability. And introduction. Development in Information Communication Technology ICT that is Computing Technology, Communication Technology and Mass Storage Technology are some of the areas of continuous development that reshape the way libraries store, access, retrieve, manipulate and disseminate information to users. The developments in ICT especially the WW and Internet have led to information explosion. Information explosion and adoption of a new technology is needed to support this new search and indexing functionality as well as store of full text content in digital world. This can be solved only by implementation of digital libraries. So digital libraries differ significantly from the traditional libraries because they allow the user to access electronic resources, data sets, images and audio visual contents. In a user point of view, the digital libraries are systems that can provide consistent access to a large organized repository of information and knowledge to the users without any physical restrictions. So now we'll just discuss on the planning digital library. Objectives of digital libraries in the context of planning and implementation can be summarized as follows. First one is the selection of content and appropriate digital format. It means the selection of content may be text, images, audio and video to be added to the digital library collection and digitizing them in appropriate digital formats. The formats as PDF, HTML and JPEG, uh, JPG etc. Second one is assigning metadata to the digital content. Assigning metadata to the digital documents being added to the collection that is author, title, publisher, publication date and place etc. in the case of books and other documents the metadata may differ that is journals and thesis and registration etc. Next is the indexing and the storage of documents. Indexing and storage of documents and metadata for enabling its efficient search and retrieval of a digital documents. So this is the major portion where exactly the index is happening and how efficient we can just search. And the next option is with assign a unique identifier to each digital object. This is to identify the digital document, the unique number to be allotted for each and every document that is digital object identifier. This is like ISBN number for books and ISSN number for journals. The next option is for the developing a web based interface. This is to enable search, browse, view and retrieve the contents by the user community. Next, identification of a requirement and before commencement of a digital library project, it is essential to articulate its requirement and purpose as concisely as possible. That is its need and relevance. Why we are going to, uh, we need to identify what is the need of this digital library. Second is targeted community of users who is going to use this digital library. And next is with the process involved in a building of a digital library. And after that, we need to think of other practical questions to be answered. They are, what type of resources will it contain? So whether it is in a books or a journals or a thesis and dissertation, e-newsletters e and other things. And how it is expected to grow? Uh, the collection by, uh, by it, is, uh, it is going to submit by the users or the, only the librarian and other things we have to discuss. And who is going to use it and how? 
whether the PG students or research scholars and uh, faculty members who is the audience and how can resources uh, be protected against accidental and uh, inter uh, intentional modifications. So if anyone want to download, so while doing it, what will be the problem? If anything uh, they have done a wrong, what we have to do? All those things we need to address here like and how will access and intellectual property rights be managed? The systematic download is has to be and if anyone is not doing the same like and how uh, the I mean that intellectual property rights and the download how it has to be there and any uh, violation of copyrighted issues to be taken care on this and what systems does it need to interact with whether we need to have a digital library uh, system uh, for uh, access and that to be uh, how we are just going to put it in now uh, websites all those things we have to identify and what special capabilities does it this is uh, what are searching for facilities and connecting with that uh, the recent technologies all those things and what resources will be required to create and to maintain it so now we here we need to identify uh, that uh, software and how efficient it will work all those things we need to decide about and identification of requirements and the above identification of requirements answers uh, to these questions will broadly clarify how and what are the strategies to execute the project and what are the hardware software components to be used functionality requirements key players and expertise and also which necessary to move the uh, project forward next, next is to the feasibility at the time of planning and before implementing of the digital library it is necessary to conduct a feasibility study of the digital library project the feasibility should be established not only in terms of availability of our tools and expertise but also other factors like volume numbers of a document and target audience demand for the material to be digitized and uh, users expectations and requirements and the, uh, the study should also assess the possibility to execute the project from in-house or outsourced to uh, external vendors and next is the implementation strategy and to identify various tasks related to digital library collection including development strategies it means how we are going to build the digital collections are we going to i mean uh, uh, existing content to be uh, uh, bring to the digital library or uh, the what are the uh, way we are going to access the digital uh, adding to the digital library collections and next is with the defining financial infrastructural and manpower issues uh, that is we need to understand the financial requirements of uh, hardware software and human experts all those things we need to uh, think of uh, in this uh, defining financial and infrastructure manpower resources and interface development and here we need to finalize how we are going to give the interface for access of digital resources like library or website from library website or it is from the institution website or any other media so that to be a design on this and uh, access method uh, here uh, access method is nothing but whether we are going for uh, internet or internet uh, internet access or internet access and further the resources can be accessed by all or only authenticated users it means the eligible the candidates they can access for the this kind of a resources like and the last one is a legal issues to subscribe resources here uh, uh, here it just plays the copyright and ipr issues next is the collection development in the planning a digital library collection development is to specify a need for creating a digital library it means whether our rare collection can be accessed by this or all born digital collections are going to be accessed and uh, here we need to understand like and why we need to go for a digital library creation and what kind of a collection to be added to this the next is with the purpose what purpose and who is the target audience we need to think the purpose is for a collection of a only for the text or a reference materials or any audio video and other things and the, uh, the target audience and we need to decide it is with the students or as scholars and faculty members and the next digital resources formats and compatibility so here uh, we should uh, see that on what kind of a collection we are going to in which format it is like a HTML format PDF JPG JPEG AVA MP3 etc the next is with the digital resources issues and challenges so here we need to be very clear uh, talk about that what is a copyright and IPR issues and lifelong availability it means like a, what kind of a preservation and we are going to adopt so this is with the collection development and next is with the access mechanism and sustainability here so access mechanism is nothing but abstract level or a full, full text level or a chapter wise or a full book and also 
preservation of our digital content how we are going to keep it for a lifelong access those things we need to discuss on this and next is with the type of resources and the key attributes of the sources that is types of resources is nothing but the staff publications working papers project reports thesis and dissertations etc and distribution of a print materials and required format is identifying the materials to be scanned and to decide which file format digitization of a print material and required format is and we need to identify and what are the materials to be uh, digitized and uh, which format will be uh, efficient to access by the users that to be decided on this slide next is with the digital uh, surrogates of our resources metadata the digital surrogates are considered a yeah, utility for aiding in the preservation and increased access of a certain artifacts it is theoretically possible to desire to digitize all existing collections available in the library and scale of operation in terms of a scale of operation copyright and uh, uh, value or the three factors that calls for selection of materials for registration and delivering subsets of collections in the following three formats so surrogates of a rare items for example manuscripts manuscripts will be there in our library but at the same time uh, that we can just make it for the digital so alternate alternative the solution is the uh, printed i mean the manuscript as it is it will be there and apart from this you will get for the digital collection also and this is since it is a rare material we need to go for it so this kind of a materials we can just call it as surrogates of the rare items and uh, digitized surrogate collections assembled from multiple repositories the second set what we can do is like we can just collect uh, like this rare materials already which is available in the digital format from the multi multiple repositories already institutions they might have established for the institutional repositories from that we can just collect for this digitized surrogate collections and collections assembled specifically to be digitized so here very specific we need to concentrate the material which is specifically talk about the culture related or a medicine related or some specific value collections so these all it comes under a uh, digital surrogates of a uh, resources and metadata the creation of a digital archive will significantly improve the accessibility and uh, usability of information contained within the collection whilst conserving the original materials which may get deteriorated over the long period of time next is with the bond digital resources bond digital resources are items created and managed in a digital form so this is already it is available in a digital form uh, these uh, the types of bond digital contents or uh, electronic thesis and dissertation so here electronic thesis and dissertation uh, that is electronic uh, copy of a thesis submitted by the research scholars straight away we can just add into the content so then it will comes under the type of a bond digital so like that electronic journals are available and e magazines are available so these are the subscribed electronic journals and magazines Uh, by the libraries that we can add into our content like next is with the digital photographs D digital photographs are available uh, by when you are just taking a photo by the digital cameras that is available apart from this you can even collect from that uh, uh, google uh, google google maps or uh, google uh, i mean other sites are there so there we can just collect all all digital photographs and next is with the multimedia resources multimedia resources nothing but audio and video resources which is available in the content with the library or uh, in a web we can just collect and and, and add into our uh, digital library collections the last one is with the uh, harvested web content this harvested web content is nothing but existing the related uh, the electronic uh, contents which is available on uh, other institution repositories and subject gateways so we need to collect we need to identify the good resources and add into our collect uh, add into our collection so this is called the harvested web content and next is with the project plan so after selection uh, after selecting the collections of a digitization assigning the strategic advantages of digitization and evaluating the cost to the institution the next activity to be undertaken is the development of detailed project plan this project includes the following three aspects so these are the major aspects like managerial planning infrastructure planning and uh, human resource planning so we need to take care for this uh, three plans which is most important for the project plan the first is the managerial planning uh, this may include uh, conducting a feasibility study procurement of equipment requirement of the manpower or digitization and ipr and uh, right management issues integration and uh, organization of content and finding a market 
launching and marketing of services and flow diagrams of a PERT and CPM and SWOT analysis and other management techniques may be a deployment at this stage. So here we have to be very careful choosing that managerial planning and to include of uh, the hardware software plus IPR and uh, manpower also. Uh, next is uh, with infrastructure, uh, hardware and software planning. The requirements of a hardware and software for the server and network components may be worked out with the financial implications and also connectivity and bandwidth required for uh, hosting the digitized collection to be planned. So that is for example hardware we need to decide the server brand whether you are going for IBM or a Dell or whatever it is and plus the configuration what are the high configuration recent one is available we need to select that it is based on our additional library collection. The next is with the software. The software and first we need to go with what is the operating system we are going to use then the support of uh, additional library softwares before finalizing this we should be clear enough to say that uh, what uh, software is it uh, work in which operating system so based on that we need to go for it the next is with networking and internet uh, networking is nothing but that internet service provider who is going to uh, give internet connection and internet speed how it is going to be plus web hosting of our digital collections these three we need to plan into infrastructure and hardware and software like and next is with the human resource planning human resource have to be worked out in terms of uh, staff time involved training of existing staff and uh, requirement of a uh, new staff with the desired skills so digitization when we go and we need to plan of who is efficient uh, who is efficient in what kind of a, a role of a job so that we need to design and appoint the people and next is with the financial planning financial planning and uh, approximation of the cost that is close to real implication real implementation scenario is a very important aspect in overall planning of a digital library so while doing a financial planning the following aspects must be considered the planning and consulting a cost so first one is with the planning and consulting cost the second one is the purchase of a hardware and software and networking equipments and third one is with the telecommunication cost and fourth one is with the digitization cost and fifth one is with the subscription cost and next one is the operating cost and the last one is for the training cost now these are the the cost which is involved in the financial so we need to be clear about so what uh, the expenses will be there to implement for the digital library the first one is the planning and the consulting a cost planning and consulting a cost includes the direct and indirect costs a consultant can be hired to assist the process with long range technology planning and to involve the staff in preparing for and participating in all aspects so this is we are getting a consultant so getting an idea from the outsiders like second is the purchasing of a hardware software and networking equipment initial purchase costs include acquiring the initial system hardware software manpower training and of a preparing a site or sites for the equipment example server computer desktop computers digitization equipments network connectivity digital library softwares and other equipments which is necessary for uh, our digital library the next one is with the telecommunications cost these costs are the concern only for a shared systems or multi-branch sites in addition to telephone company uh, line connections there are expenses associated with the equipment such as switches routers and hubs to connect the internet and to the external database from specific vendors. Next is with the digitization cost. Costs of digitization are associated with the scanning of a text, metadata creation and staff costs etc. or expenses towards outsourcing of the entire project to an external agency and its monitoring. So these involves for the digitization cost. Next one is with the subscription cost. Databases and uh, systems external to the library are now accessible on the internet. These databases are easily and simultaneously searchable. Example and uh, we are uh, subscribing the library products uh, like Web of Science, Scopus, Science Direct, JSTOR etc. So this comes under the subscription cost. How it will uh, uh, what are the I mean range of the cost which is available for our uh, product and next is with the operating uh, ongoing cost this is called the ongoing operational cost includes a hardware and software maintenance fees and cost for utilities miscellaneous uh, supplies and uh, telecommunications so these all it uh, it cause you are on the uh, operating uh, cost 
the next one with the training cost training cost extent beyond those costs associated with the vendor provided training on the integrated system so libraries must be prepared to fund such training initially and budget for the continuing education or both library staff and system operators now these are the important training is required by all the digital library people next is developing a preliminary budget the preliminary budget can occur by the following ways one is uh, the reading journals and other reference works that is we can just uh, study uh, study from the implementation case studies and at various institutions plus reading uh, the number of uh, journal articles the second one is having uh, uh, informal discussions or meetings with the potential providers of service and systems so this is we can just talk to that uh, the experts of uh, those who are doing a service already so we can just talk to them and then get the idea from the service providers the next is with the visiting other libraries and uh, talking with other librarians so we can just visit nearby libraries where exactly they have implemented what are the cost is involved and uh, to talk to the librarians to get the different aspects what are the expenses will cost so all those things we can just get idea from the existing uh, implemented libraries next is with the commissioning a consultant report so we can even just consult with that experts of a digital library consultant and get a report and how much the cost will implicate for while we are in, while we are just starting the digital library so all that information we can just get from the consultant the next is with the gathering information through the use of formal request to the vendors so this is straight away and who is the supplier and who is already the existing the market we can just get the estimation from the suppliers or vendors and next is with the gathering information through the web so apart from this and we can also just collect that information by accessing a web by accessing the product catalogs and uh, implementation cost by other institutions so if you want to buy a software like we can just browse and what is the software what will be the cost and related to the software and what are what else is required all that informations we can just identify by gathering the information through the web now these are the important points and important ways to collect the developing a preliminary budget next is digital library implementation now we are into the implementation points and digital library implementation is needed for the following reasons so one is improved access why we need to go for a implementation of digital library so that is first one is required for improved access digital libraries are typically accessed through the internet and compact disk read only memory and they can accessed virtually from anywhere and any time they are not tied to the physical location and operating house of traditional libraries so this is with the improved access the second one is with the wider access the digital library can meet simultaneous access requests for a document by easily creating multiple instances or copies of the requested documents it can also meet the requirements of a large population of users easily the next is with the improved information sharing through the appropriate metadata and information exchange protocols the digital libraries can easily share information with other similar digital libraries and provide enhanced access to the users so this is called a harvesting of a content so like that you can just share what is a digital library collections are available with you you can just share with other librarians and what is there with other libraries you can also just download so this is called the and it is possible by that additional library and the next is with the improved preservation since that electronic documents are not prone to physical wear and tear uh, their exact copies can easily be made the digital libraries facilitate preservation of, of special and uh, rare documents and artifacts by providing access to digital versions of these entities so improved preservation is always it is possible the printed material can be digitized and digital can be preserved for a longer time and uh, uh, we can give a very good access those uh, rare material and other things so these are the ways we can just go for a implementation uh, why we need to go for a implementation of a digital libraries next is with the reuse and documents reuse the documents it means to convert documents into and different formats for example to use images in a slide show and to adapt the content for different purposes the same content we can utilize for some other purposes it's possible by reuse the documents next is with the steps for implementation so establishing the digitization team so first step is it's establishing the digitization team 
that is we need to finalize the team leader system administrator technical assistance binders so here the technical assistance means like and we need to find out the digital uh, digital library expertise and who can just create a content who can add a metadata like a cataloger so all the technical assistance we need to finalize on this the next step is for setting up the information technology infrastructure so here we need to decide about the like a hardware software networking components and what are the related uh, uh, related components which is required for our additional library so all those things we need to uh, decide about in this steps the next one is for the procuring and installing additional library uh, software packages and either commercial so here we need to decide it is whether either commercial or open source software to be decided and to install the softwares like ellipsis a green sun digital library software d space all you can just i mean whatever the i mean according to your cost and the features we need to select according to the features we need to select the software for uh, uh, having of a digital collections like the last one is for the finalizing of policies and specifications steps for implementation i mean uh, the next step is with the finalizing of policies and specification here we need to finalize what are the policies we are going to uh, do for the digital library for example what kind of a materials to be acts uh, to be added to our collection and how that collection is going to be given access and who all can access and who all can participate to uh, deposit that uh, collections all the specifications and copyright issues all we need to uh, discuss on this slide and next is with the completing arrangement of a workflow for a digitization so here arrangement for workflow is first collecting and organizing then we have to we need to just create a, a metadata and upload the content so all the formalities all the arrangement workflow should be ready for uh, the digitizing the work next is the creating the online digital library collections so creating online digital library collection it means like we are just giving an uh, collecting the uh, digital existing collections into our library uh, our digital library collections the next is with the obtaining copyright permissions we have to be very careful the digital library and it it plays a vital role for a copyright issues so we need to be very careful for uh, selecting the document so that should not get into any problem with the copyright issues so what are the copyright is whether the permissions uh, all can access or only the those who have got uh, authentication can access this uh, so that we need to decide on this uh, steps the next is with the providing access to the digital library collection so providing access to the digital library collection is nothing but our uh, developed uh, the digital library how we can just provide the uh, access so that we need to decide on this now these are the steps for that uh, implementation next is with the techniques for digitization the digitization of a documents for a digital library is generally accomplished in six stages such as registering scanning optical character recognition ocr and next is proofreading formatting producing the final version so now these are the major six steps will be used for the techniques for digitization so we'll discuss one by one and first as with the registering so before scanning a large number of our documents there is a need to first register them and use the filing system to keep their track because when we just uh, keep on scanning and we will miss that other uh, pages what is gone first what is gone second or other so we need to register and keep filing uh, to keep that track if not and you risk misplacing hard copies losing files skipping steps to the process or duplicating work perhaps without realizing it so these will all happen so if you are not properly maintaining you sometimes you will just miss the files and your hard copy also it, it may be like uh, it will just uh, missing and uh, skipping steps in the process this will happen into the uh, so we have to go with the proper registration there is also the risk of uh, losing uh, electronic versions of a uh, files because they have been misnamed or saved in a wrong sub directories so when you are just processing when you are doing a process of digitizing the lot of collections will be available you have to be very careful page by page or the the title of the book and other thing you have to be properly record you should prepare a directories sub directories files all those things for a, having a, a registering system and next is with the moreover a good filing system is vital so everyone in a digitization team knows what he is supposed to do and how Uh, fill in for another person in case of absence so when we are just doing a registering in the proper way and overall involved in the our registration team and anyone can understand what is going on how we need to go for the next step all those things if you are not doing this then again the confusion will be there so for that we need to go with the registering second is with the scanning it is necessary to clean and dust off the documents to be scanned make sure 
uh, that all the pages are present and in the register uh, and the right order. So when we are just going for uh, scanning before we need to check that what are the documents, whether the pages are correct, whether it's a dust clean, all those things we need to look into this. Second, if the document if is in a poor condition, try to find a fresh copy. If it is a sheet feeder scanner, cut the document open to get individual sheets to feed through the scanner. If necessary, you can rebind the documents later. For example, when you just go for a thesis uh, a scanning and other things, so first uh, if it is very difficult to scan with the bound, you can just uh, unbound those things. Then after the scanning, you can just go for a rebind. So this is an option we can use it for a while before start the scanning. And if you do not want to damage the documents, you can photocopy each page and feed into the photocopy through the scanner. Though this uses a lot of a paper and uh, reduce the quality of a scan. So this is possible. Uh, after I mean without uh, opening a binding we can also just go for a photocopy taking a photocopy and do it but the quality will be very less quality will just go off and the next point is to scan a document on a flat belt scanner place it face down on the scanner uh, platen or put the pages into the feed sheeter then the software choose a setting a resolution and colors and uh, scan each pages of the document at the settings you have done. Next option is the OCR optical character recognition. So software converts. So here what will happen is the software converts a scanned images into a text files that a word processor can read. The next is with the, the software breaks the text blocks down into lines or into an individual character. It tries to match the images of each letter against pattern it recognize. So sometimes the OCR after you are completed, it is possible to search by the text. So PDF, when you just do that, it comes as the PDF for example, the PDF also it can be searchable by making of the text PDF uh, after OCR, PDF also it is possible to search. Next is the proofreading. So this is the act of making a corrections to the document text and layout. This is done in two ways and one is the comparing the uh, scanned text on the screen with the hard copy and entering the corrections directly into the computer. The word processor spell checker will help in spelling errors quickly. So this is the one way. The second way it is a printing out uh, the scanned text and comparing it with the original copy and uh, mark any corrections on the printout and then enter them into the computer. This is a slower method but maybe the best option if there is a no and uh, not enough the computers for uh, each proofreader. So this is possible this is the proofreading. So once this is done we can just finalize the document for a digital collection right. The next is with the reformatting the optical character recognition software may produce a document that consists of a uh, striped text no columns, no header and no footers and there is the need to reinsert these by hand or correct where they appear on the page. So OCR they cannot go with the, uh, the column setting or header footer. So we need to reset these uh, by the hands. So wherever the correction is required we need to go for it. So they may be also need to change the typeface, headings, heading styles and so on. To make the document more attractive and readable, we need to uh, reassemble all the type settings and the like. The final is alternatively, you may be able to adjust the settings of your OCR program to preserve the layout of the page. So once it is pakka, it is done, we can just go make this copy can be and this uh, the page layout can be for other uh, resources. This is possible. This is with the reformatting and the final is the final version. For many documents, there is a need to add some information to the text so that readers can identify it as easily. So for example, uh, uh, to say like writing a reviews, so like that many documents there is a need to add some information to the text so that the readers can identify it as easily. As far as a book, you must make sure that the book title, the author, the editor, publisher, publication date and all, uh, all are included. As for a chapter in a book and you should include the title and the author of the uh, chapter and the original page numbers in printed version of a book. So these are the extra information to be included in the uh, document. And as for the journal articles, you should include the journal title of the uh, journal title, the date, the volume, issue number, the article titles and the authors and the page numbers in the original printed journals. In other words, there is the need to add metadata to describe each document. So this metadata may be differ from each and every document. And next the last option will be the hosting platforms. 
the institution should i um, mean once you have implementation of uh, implementation the strategy and all over we need to plan for the hosting platforms so the institution should plan uh, to host the digital library content on its own server or any other mechanism to reduce the cost and the internet uh, and internet traffic the options for a hosting digital library are self hosting mirror hosting and cloud share hosting so these are the three options uh, hosting means what are the digital collections which you are already it is there available you are you have built the collection it is available in your software and finally this is the place where we can just host for a uh, internet access so for that we need to plan for that is what one is a self hosting mirrored hosting and cloud share uh, so what is uh, first is a self hosting institute can plan hosting of a digital content at their own premises self hosting requires preparation of a site in terms of a power backup environment control fire protection access control etc the hosting infrastructure such as we need uh, for servers storage capacities and networking bandwidth also to be planned so self hosting we're keeping our server uh, in our premises itself for that we should have all that environment backup and all uh, environmental uh, environmental protection should be there plus equipment should be there the next one is with the mirror hosting institute can also make mirroring of a digital library contents and replica can be hosted on other sites and the other servers maintained by some other commercial vendors so this will help in reducing the costly internet traffic mirror sites also increase the speed with which will file or websites can be accessed so institute or replica it means like one copy can be here and the other copy can be there at the commercial sites the next option is with the cloud cloud shared services cloud based services will provide highly scalable infrastructure and technical expertise to deliver a scalable flexible and reliable platform for a hosted application since they are the masters they are the golden service providers and we can just give all the content to uh, the service provider they can have it from the remote so our content everything will be sitting on that remote so it is with the third party it provides a robust platform for a growth and ensures that the clients hosted applications are delivered in a timely manner with the expected quality of a service and security since they are the masters and they can be do in the proper way it is in a properly planned so we need not to worry about uh, the infrastructure of our hardware software all those things in this way the next is uh, so once it is over and we have just given access and uh, their hosting also it is over finally we need to decide and promotion and uh, provision of services how best we can just go for a promotion of our digital library and what are the services uh, so here uh, the digital library collection created should be visible and it should be provide an easy access for users the one way of uh, uh, achieving this is to include links to the collection sites in the appropriate pages of the library website and the other related online services in the organization so we can do one i mean all the digital uh, collected or content can be accessed by our library website plus and whatever the online services by the organization which is available we can add into that the second one is in addition to uh, or in the absence of a remote online access to the digital collection there is a need to explore other methods of providing access to the digital collections so we need to think of if it is an online is it okay even sometimes if any problem with the online we need to think of providing uh, the access by the other ways so those uh, includes or and setting up local public uh, access computers on library local uh, area network so we can just plan five to six uh, computers which can access uh, these kind of uh, materials once the collected is we need to put it in the internet but local area network can be accessed next is provision of a email based services whatever um, we are doing a email based services we can include our documents and next is with the optical media cd dvd rom based distribution of a collections can be done and internet based distribution of a collections and uh, finally is awareness services and promotions through web 2.0 technologies so whatever it is we can just even share our informations by social media and forums and rss and our digital uh, libraries and digital collections we can just share by this based on this we can just promote our digital libraries and the last point is with the uh, intellectual property rights and aware of the relevant intellectual property rights that apply to the creation uh, storage and dissemination of digital information resources in a digital collections intellectual property rights is a very important uh, aspect we need to take care of this and intellectual property rights are like any other property right they allow creators or owners or patents or trademarks 
or a copyrighted works to be benefit from their own work or investment in a creation like the academic libraries which are interested to undertake a dissertation project they need to be aware of the legal issues related to this so they must investigate the copyright laws involved of each item they intend to digitize and also the legal issues affecting its access by users thus three issues such as copyright authenticity and intellectual property management must be properly addressed by the libraries and at last uh, the summary what we have just learned uh, by this class is for the digital libraries facilities users to access electronic versions of a full text documents and their associated images and next is with the setting up of digital library requirements require planning and implementation strategy includes a budget collection development and selection of a content manpower skill development or digitization and sustainability etc and uh, final is this model uh, reviews the steps involved in a digitization projects and pro uh, proposes uh, solutions to improve the efficiency of a digital library software packages thank you